I've already made a mistake. Hello and welcome to Cooking the Books with Heather. On this episode, I'm going to be working again from the Outlander Kitchen Cookbook and I have uh, by Teresa Carl Sanders and I have my appropriate uh, shirt on. So uh, I realized I had a couple of these so I thought I'd wear it. Um, but today we're going to be making crowdy cheese. So this is a fresh cheese and I've actually never, ever, ever made cheese at home. I know it's pretty easy to make ricotta and those kinds of cheeses, which this is what it reminds me of. Um, it's going to be that sort of cheese. And uh, she says this is good on um, oat cakes, bannocks, scones, and sandwiches. Um, it, it doesn't make a whole lot because it doesn't start with a huge amount of milk, but Right now I have my milk, it's this whole milk. Um, and it's just regular from the grocery store milk. It's not special, raw, whatever. It's just regular from the grocery store, whole milk. Heating up on the stove at medium heat. Now you need to heat this until it foams um, and simmers, but she gives you a temperature. So I really like that. So I'm using my Instant Read probe thermometer to uh, check that we're going to 195 degrees Fahrenheit. So let me go see if we're there. We were almost there right before we started filming. So, um, but it does take a while. She says about 20 minutes. And I think that, yeah, we're about 20 minutes now. And there we are. You do need to stir this uh, occasionally to keep it from scorching, but we're at 195 degrees. And now you can see the steam coming up. Um, we're going to add lemon juice. Um, you can use vinegar as well, but we're going to use, uh, this is just freshly squeezed lemon juice. Just drizzle it in. There we go. And we're supposed to stir this once and then leave it undisturbed for five minutes. So we'll see you in about five minutes. <sighs> okay, my timer just went off. So it's been five minutes and we're going to check to see if the uh, milk has separated into curds and whey. The whey should be sort of translucent. I feel like it started to, but like that is not at all as much as I was expecting from this and the, the, the milk part, the liquid part is not translucent. So in this case, we're supposed to add uh, a little bit more of our um, vinegar or lemon juice and try again. All right. I'm going to stir once. And set another timer for five minutes. I'm feeling a little bit better about this now. It looks a little bit more like more has separated. Oh yeah, so we've got definitely some clear liquid. There we go. I think this is what we're looking for here. Hopefully you can see that where it's, it looks like sort of clumps of white in a clear-ish or a transparent liquid. So pretty much done with this, I think. Let me get something to put it on. All right. So now I'm gonna put this away and we won't need this until later. So I don't need it right this second. Okay. So I have a let me put this up here. Get this over here where you guys probably can see it up there a little bit better. So I have a taller pot here with a, she says a colander, but I've just got my, um, my largest sieve uh, and four layers of uh, cheesecloth in the sieve. And we're supposed to gently ladle all of this into here. So we're gonna strain out that way. That is the point here. We're supposed to be very gentle with this so we don't break up 
the curds here, the larger pieces, which is I think probably why we don't just pour it in here. Now that we're down to the very last bits, I'm gonna kind of pour it and scrape the last little bits. There we go. We leave it like this for about 30 minutes and we can um, sort of fold the curds over themselves, but try not to press on it um, to help encourage the whey to come out of here. But we're gonna let it sit like this for 30 minutes. So I'm gonna set a timer and we'll see you in about 30 minutes. I've already made a mistake. So apparently I was supposed to let that sit for 30 minutes before I did that. So I'm gonna sort of combine it all together this is me trying to fix my mistake. All right, so I'm going to leave these bits in here. Hopefully I haven't completely messed it up. And just do this again in my other pot, I don't know, whatever. So I'm gonna leave that sit for 30 minutes and then we strain it. So, great. Now we'll see you in 30 minutes. Now this has been sitting for another 30 minutes and I think that the curds are uh, potentially a little larger. So I'm just going to once again transfer this over here into my uh, sieve with the cheesecloth, and then we're gonna let it sit like that for another 30 minutes. So we'll see you in about 30 minutes. Okay, so this has been sitting for another 30 minutes, and I think I didn't mess it up too badly, thankfully. Um, but now it's time to hang this. So we're supposed to gather up the corners, and well, let's, Actually, let's do it this way. We're supposed to tie it around this so that we can hang it over our um, over our pot. And I want it to not go down too far, so I'm gonna hang it pretty tightly to the spoon, I think. I've never done this before, as I said. So, there we go. And then we basically just take this away. And maybe I need to turn it upside down. There we go. And hang it for another 30 minutes. Now she says also you can sort of twist and squeeze this a couple times to try to uh, get the last of the way. Uh, twist it gently. She doesn't say squeeze, she says twist it gently. Um, once or twice to expel the last of the way. So I will set a timer for 30 minutes and then we'll be almost done, almost done. So this one takes a while. It's actually, everything sits for like an hour and a half, but it's very little hands-on time, so that's good. But we'll see you back in about 30 minutes. All right, our, our cheese, our crowdy cheese has been hanging like this for 30 minutes, give or take. I actually give a little bit. And I twisted it a couple of times, but now I'm going to unwrap it from the, there we go, from the um, wooden spoon and turn this out into a bowl. I've got a little bowl. We're, we're not going to keep it for very long, but she says uh, you can keep it in the refrigerator for like five days. Um, and we're going to add a little bit of kosher salt to this and just mix it in. So it really looks a lot like um, ricotta to me. Um, but you don't have to be careful with it anymore because you've gotten most of that way out. And there we go. It does look 
nicely spreadable, like it would go well, you know, on a sandwich, like she says. But our plans for this is to serve this with gingerbread. So stay tuned and you'll see our gingerbread with fresh cut, fresh crud. Yes, I know the name is interesting. Um, next week where we'll use this, but it, it is just a very mild, fresh, spreadable cheese that you can use on any sort of um, bread product that you like. Oh, also she says, really you can use this whey for, um, at, in place of milk, she says in the brown buns at Boli, I think, Bewley, I forget how to pronounce that. Anyway, um, but you can also serve it on top of several other recipes in here. But like I said, we're gonna serve it with the gingerbread. So stay tuned next week. On this episode of Cooking the Books with Heather, you watched me make Crowdy Cheese from the Outlander Kitchen Cookbook. Um, never made cheese before. And even though I kinda messed it up a little bit, it turned out fine. It turned out great. We did not use it um, so much by itself because we had planned to use it for another recipe, so watch out for that uh, next time. But ours turned out, I was a little surprised that mine was a little bit salty. Um, I used the amount of salt that she called for even though often my salt turns out to be less salty than other salts. We just the, the kosher salt that I have is even um, less dense than a lot of kosher salts. Um, different brands are very different. So anyway, um, so it turned out a little bit salty, but I would definitely make this again. In fact, I think I probably will and use it more as a topping spread, whatever, um, instead of the sweeter application that we used it for. Um, it was way easier than I expected. Um, you really just need, you need to have the cheesecloth, but milk, lemon juice or vinegar, and then you have some fresh cheese. And we love cheese in our house, so we'll be trying this one again. So let me know if you try it in the comments down below or if you have any other uh, suggestions for how I should use it because it is something that you need to use up pretty quickly. Um, I don't think it says on this page, but I think she said about five days or so. It's just, it's just something that's gonna, it's not preserved like a lot of cheeses are. Um, the only preservatives in it are the salt, really, that you added. Um, so yeah, if you enjoyed watching me make this, please give me a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button and come back and watch me make something else next week. Hit that like button with your foot subscribe button with your big toe. I don't know, it doesn't make any sense. <laughs>